Here we are in lesson two. In the last lesson, if you remember, we discussed different topics like X and Y coordinates on the screen, how to place text and different shapes. In this lesson, we're going to be showing you how we can display things in a different way to the screen and also make cool animations like this. So what exactly is animation? I'm sure you like to watch cartoons or animated movies and you probably wonder how they're made. Essentially, there are lots of still, hand-drawn, or computer-generated images that are put together to create the illusion of movement. And we're going to be doing exactly the same thing. Okay, here we are in UI Flow again. Let's start by naming our project. And I'm going to call this one Emoji Animations. So, in the last lesson, we looked at using the UI manager text and shape elements to create some kinds of graphics on the screen. In this lesson, we're going to look at another way that we can display different graphics on the screen by using the emoji blocks. If we scroll down, we can see the emojis and then we can drag an emoji block in. Okay. So what happens here, this emoji block is essentially splitting up the screen into smaller squares. We talked about pixels in the last lesson and how there's many, many pixels on the M5 scale screen. If we were to individually color all of those pixels in one by one, it would take us a long time to create any sort of easily recognizable image. So with this, however, with it split up into a grid, we can start to just click on the individual blocks and create some simple images. Then you'll notice when we run the program, all of those boxes that we have ticked on the emoji grid will now appear as filled in on the grid on the screen. But what, for instance, if we wanted to show different colors in the same grid? Well, that's why we have a separate block in the emojis. Here we can choose a specific pixel in the grid and set it to a specific color. Just as we talked about the X and Y coordinates in the last lesson, here is the same concept the lines are arranged horizontally and the rows vertically. So for instance, I could choose uh, line three and choose the second block in there and color it red. I could do this for four separate uh, blocks in the grid, change the color each time And through this method, I can create a more colorful picture on the emoji. It takes a little bit more time to set up than the, um, than the regular emoji blocks, but this is the way that we can get more colorful pictures. So if we run that, we see that we have four different colored pixels. Now, what about if I wanted to make an animation? So the emojis can be stringed together to create an animation. As we mentioned, the emojis are just like the pictures we see in an animation. Each one set off by a few fractions of a second can create the illusion of motion. So we can keep duplicating these emojis with different pictures. Stay, for instance, a happy face. that then turns to a sad face. Now if we run this though, you'll notice that you can only really see the sad face. Why is that? The reason for this is that the M5 Go is quite powerful. It can run thousands of commands in the space of a second. 
So it did actually change from happy to sad on the emojis, but it happened so fast that we didn't even see it. This is why we need to use a timer block. Basically the timer block will slow the program down so that we, we can notice the difference. So we'll pop the timer block in between and then one after. And now if we run it, we can see the change. Now also we notice that it only changes once and then stops. This is the nature of the setup block. The program goes from one, two, three, four, and then stops. If we wanted our animation to repeatedly loop, we would use a loop block. We can drag our animations inside the loop block and then connect them up to the setup block. Now if we run the program, we can see change back and forth between the two emojis. Okay, let's try and create some more kind of complex animations. I was thinking I could make some fireworks. So first we might start with a simple single block of color in the middle of the screen. And then we could alter the blocks to make that dot gradually grow as it explodes and expands outwards. Again, remembering to put the weight blocks in between. We could also change the color of the emojis on each change of picture. I won't go through the whole animation, but see if you can make it. And let's see my result when I've done. Here we can see our animation is looping over and over again, and it will continue to do so unless we press the power button off. That's the nature of loops in programming. If we wanted more control, we can choose an image to appear if we press A, B, or C. Now we can see how we could design a game by using the A, B, C buttons with the emoji blocks. Okay. Well, now we know how to make animations and they'll loop over and over again, but maybe you might want some more control over what is displayed and when. Well, you've probably noticed that the M5 Go has three buttons on the front and actually we can program these buttons to do whatever we want. In this case though, we'll use the button was pressed block to set a different emoji for each button and then we'll try to make a simple game. You'll notice that these blocks cannot connect up to the setup. This is because they are each an independent loop within themselves. We can choose button B, button C from the drop down list. And now for rock, paper, scissors, a popular game, I can make an emoji for each of the different tools in the game. So a rock might be some simple rounded square in the middle of the emoji. Yours don't have to look exactly like mine. You can experiment with different images, different ways of displaying the rock, paper and the scissors. For paper, I might just do a quick outline of the edge of the piece of paper. And then for the scissors, this could be the trickier one. I can add in two small squares on the left hand side to start. And then once I've drawn those squares, I can do two diagonal lines heading off from the squares, which looks like the blade of the scissors. Okay, now our game is just about done. If you have a friend around who also has an M5 Go, you guys can play this together. Once we upload the code and press the buttons, we'll see that the image changes depending on which button we press. Then we can see through a few rounds of the game who will be the winner. Try it yourselves.
get creative with your games and your animations. We'd love to see them, so make sure you share them with us. And if you ever get stuck, remember you can always leave a comment or send us a message. I'll see you next time.